Hi, this is Igor. Resolve version 17 public beta is just out, and they have introduced something called Fusion Effects, which is a nice way to bring Fusion comps onto the edit page. So for example here, if you look at these pre-made Fusion Effects and hover over them, you can see what they do. These are just basically Fusion comps that, that interact with the clip I have selected on the timeline. I have made my own, and I'll show you how to do that. It's this thing called Cube. Let's drag and drop it onto the clip. If you open the inspector, there's some basic controls. You can rotate the cube and you can move it around. But let me show you how I built this. I will start clean here by deleting this clip from the timeline and dropping it down again. What we use to build the effect is really not important because it won't be saved with the effect. It's just there so we can see something in the faces of the cube. We'll take this to the Fusion, and I'll use Control Space to pull up the Select Tool panel. We'll take Shape 3D, we'll need the Merge 3D, some lights, and a Render 3D. I'm also going to hold Shift key, break this media out, connect the output of the render to the media out, so we can see that up there. If you drag the Merge 3D over on this side, you can see it in 3D. And obviously this is not a cube, it's just a plane, so we'll click on the shape 3D. And here instead of plane, select cube. One important thing we're missing is in the render, we have to enable the lighting. And then we have to position these lights so we can see what we're doing. I'm rotating this with Alt, middle click, drag. Okay, that's our light one. And light two. Let's put it there. I'm going to rotate the cube a little bit so we can see what we're doing. This light will just give us a little nice kick from the side. This one will be in the front. Let's change the fall off. Make it nice and soft. And I will add a ambient light as well. we'll for that, we'll click Control Space, type in a few letters of ambient, and lastly, I'll bring down the intensity of uh, my two lights down a little bit. At this point, we can actually pipe the picture into the cube, and it will map itself on all the faces, but I want to add a little bit of a bump texture to make it a little more interesting, so for that, we'll uh, Control Space, type in Blend for Blend Material. We'll need some noise. Bump map. We have to change the frequency of the noise. And the contrast. So this looks about right. Let's see our bump map. Maybe go a little smaller still. Like that and we'll connect this to the bump map material input which if you look at the lower left uh, each one of these little triangles tells you what the input is I think it should probably default to it but just to be safe I'll drop it right on the uh, on that white arrow and we'll use this as a diffuse map so now if you take the output of that feed it into the shape 3D you can see the effect of the bump map all this is very interactive you can still dial all that in you can change the scale of the bump map. We don't need a whole lot, just a, just a little bit to uh, unflatten this uh, light reflection. And that's pretty much it. Actually, no, let's add one more effect we didn't have before. Let's try to do lens reflections. So these will change as we're rotating the cube. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's say we like this. Here comes the most important part, which is turning this into a fusion effect. I will highlight all of these nodes except for the media in and media out. Right click on any of these nodes and go to macro, we'll call it cube. I will uncollapse our shape 3D and whatever we check here is going to be exposed in the inspector panel on the edit page. So we want to do the XYZ translation 
as well as XYZ rotation. So, uh, and these are the labels for those uh, controls. So this will be move. I'll just copy and paste that. This is rotate. And then we go file, save as. We have to save this at a very specific place. It depends on the OS. In Windows, which I'm using right now, it's this path right here. And that's our old effect. So I'm just going to overwrite that old effect cube settings. We'll know that the new one is there because I put that lens flare, so there'll be a difference. Yes, we'll overwrite that. And we are done, I believe. So let's go, go up to the edit page. I will delete this clip. Let's drop a clean cat clip on the timeline. Go to the effects library, cube, drag and drop. And let's see if our lens flare is there, and it is. This is our new effect. The fusion effect is applied downstream from these controls, so if you change anything here, you'll see what I mean. I'll show you one extra thing I wasn't originally planning on doing. If you take this clip to fusion, you'll see that inside our effect is not there. So what happens if you want to edit that? How do you do that? The way you can edit your fusion effects is by means of a little hack. Perhaps there's a better way, but this is the only way I know. On the left we have a text editor, and this cube.setting is our file, our macro we created. So what we do is we change macro operator to say group operator. And then we select all of this and copy. Now I go to fusion. You can open anything in Fusion, doesn't matter. And then we're going to paste that here. And we turn that macro into a group, which now we can right click and ungroup. So at this point, we can simply edit this. And if you want to save it again, we just repeat the same process. We right select nodes, right click and say macro, create macro. That's it for this version 17 tutorial. Keep in mind that things may change. This is a public beta that just dropped yesterday, so who knows?